if you could say the name of your loved one or loved ones into the microphone so that we could hear. And then you can return to your seat after that. So with that, I invite you to silence your cell phones and then to please stand for our opening hymn. Our opening hymn is on page two, Going Home. John, James, Beatrice, Joseph, Olivine, and Richard. Rose, Art, Fred, Marge, Mike, and Ken. My father, Ken Donnell, my in-laws, Arthur, and Dolores Borsa. Deacon John W. Shaw.
Alan Jim and Ted Gillespie. Janet Seawold. My mother, Frances. My grandmother, Rose. And my mother's three sisters, Rose, Evelyn, and Anne. And Anne. Santini and Mary and Bill Smith, brother Tom Smith and cousin Paul. Carl and Valerie, John, Muriel and Eunice. and Russell. My mother and father-in-law, Ray and Marilyn, sorry. To you, O oh God, we lift up all these saints to your loving and eternal home. And we praise the Lord, for God is great in you. Let us sing praises for God's glorious works. makes and sustains all Solomon, the souls of the righteous 
are in the hand of God. And no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died. And their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good. Because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. And like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The response of these Psalm 24, breaking as disastrous. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas. And made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? And who can stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart. Who have not pledged themselves to falsehood, nor sworn by what is of God. They shall receive a blessing from the Lord. And a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him. Of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory.
Let us stand as we are able for the Gospel song on page 6. The temple rang with golden coins. We shall sing three verses before the Gospel and two verses after. this 
celebration is overshadowed by the upcoming holiday of Thanksgiving, similar to how Holy Saturday gets lost in Easter week and Easter. But All Saints Day can bring us a unique blessing, just as Holy Saturday does, because these are days that are about how some of the sadder parts of human experience, namely grief and loss and death, can be washed away in holiness when they are brought before God. All Saints Day is so important because it is the one church holiday set aside during the year to tend to our grief. We experience grief on Good Friday and Holy Saturday as well, but that grief is the suffering and death of Jesus and the grand theological ideas that accompany them. All Saints Day, however, is for us, for remembering the people we love who were important to us, who made an impact on us, and then they died and left us behind. Now we all know that grief is one of life's most powerful human experiences, and grief is often lonely. Many of us have awakened on the morning after the death of a loved one and simply wondered how the sun can rise on another day and the earth can continue to turn after our world has been utterly destroyed. Now we are grateful for friends and colleagues who show us concern at those times, but we may find it a little strange to realize that even though they truly felt sorry for us in our loss, that this particular death turned our world upside down, but it really didn't upset their daily routines like it did ours. We're not angry, of course, because no one could love our dear one or agonize over their departure the way that we could at that time. But it is just so surreal to realize that after someone says something kind to us about our loss and our grief, that that person has the ability to go back to their normal daily lives and routines while we are stuck wondering what to do and how we are going to get through the day. It is a realization that all of us have at some time or another, but our own personal losses and tragedies really don't matter in the bigger picture of life itself, but they matter tremendously to us. And on this day, we are able to share our grief and our loss here individually and corporately in this place. On All Saints Day, in God's holy church, the losses that we have borne over the years come front and center and are named for everyone to hear here in this place. On All Saints Day, our grief is no longer lonely and isolating, but we gather in this sanctuary and let our grief bind us together in a new and powerful way as we remember those who have died and as we light our candles and as we speak their names so that all can hear. All Saints Day is an important ministry to each of us in our loss and our grief because it helps us re-enter that place of mourning in a rhythm year after year each November. As the green and bustling summer life dies and retreats to the wintry ground, we also are able to bring up the pain of loss on purpose in this rhythm year after year. And each year that we revisit this process, the pain softens and loses its sharpness. And every time we name our loved ones among the saints, we, own, we honor not only their lives, but our own grief 
with memories, whether they be painful or joyful. And it is so important to honor the memories of our deceased loved ones, because most of them had a funeral or a memorial service to commemorate them. But those services typically happen right after the loss, and often our emotions are completely chaotic, not to mention the practical circumstances we are trying to manage. If you have lost someone close to you, either due to sudden accident or wrong illness, you probably remember the days in the immediate aftermath as a haze of confusion and a blur. There are so many things to attend to, notifying friends, organizing a service, pulling together all the details, thinking about wills and estates, and as well as the emotions of all of our family members. Frankly, those times are not often easy to treasure the memory of our departed one, because many of us who are grieving float through the funeral or memorial service in a sort of disconnected shock. So this is where All Saints Day comes to our aid. There is no chaos here. There are no arrangements to be made. And no one is being singled out to sit down in the front of the church in the very front pew. We are all in this together. And the ones we are remembering are long settled in their resting places. Today is our chance to be private about our grief, taking out our memories and the quiet of our hearts and turning them over one by one, taking our time to remember and to reflect. But all of us are doing the same thing at the same time in the same place. We are doing it all together. And as each of us bring up the faces of our loved ones who are deceased, we cherish the chance to do so peacefully and uninterrupted. And while we are doing that, our neighbor sitting next to us or around us in this very space is doing exactly the same thing. We all enter into the shadow of death together, and we walk through it in solidarity with one another. Now there is someone else who is in solidarity with us in our grief, and that is Jesus. In our gospel today, we see him in the exact situation that we have faced in our own lives, the inevitable but painful death of a loved one. Lazarus had been sick, and they all knew it was a possibility that he might die, but even Jesus can't quite believe it at first. He doesn't want to believe it. And he asks if Lazarus has been buried, hoping that the message that he received may have been twisted along the way. And maybe Lazarus is still alive. Jesus says, where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And then the emotional response from Jesus as we are told that he began to weep. It's true that Jesus sees so much pain in his lifetime, and he bared so bravely. He saw the suffering of his people crushed under the imperial power of Rome, and he doesn't cry. He saw 5,000 hungry and poor people on a hillside needing to be fed, and he doesn't cry. He sees people tormented by demons, bleeding or paralyzed for years, and he doesn't cry. He continues his ministry, and he cares for them, heals them, and loves them. But here, in our gospel, at last, his tears flow freely over the loss of his beloved friend. It was nothing grand or dramatic. It was only one of his best friends who was sick and died, and Jesus weeps. 
And so perhaps on this day of letting our heartache step out on the open ground, we can be in solidarity with Jesus as much as he is in solidarity with us. He always bears the burden. Maybe today we can say, Jesus, we understand how you felt. We're sorry you lost your friend, and we love you. Come, be with us for a while, and we'll all be in this together. Jesus brought his friend Lazarus back on the final, just as on the final day, we will all be brought back to life by him to live. And how did Jesus raise Lazarus up to new life? How did he bring him back from the dead? By calling his name. Lazarus, come out. Today, we're doing the same thing. We're calling out the names of our loved ones who have passed on. And they answer us. They are resurrected in our hearts, brought to life here in this place and in this time as we remember them and think about them and cherish them. So whether it is on one side of the border between life and death, we all want to be with our loved ones. As the communion of saints joins spirits across the divide today, we may realize that we are being called by name today as well, named and loved by the ones who have gone before us. So may God rekindle the love that we have for those who have died, and may we experience them in a new way as we see ourselves in that great communion of saints. May God bless us and strengthen us and comfort us and embrace us, the saints of God in this place, and embrace the saints of God who have gone before us and hold us all together this day and evermore. Let us stand as we are able to say together the Apostles' Creed. I give my heart to God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I give my heart to Jesus Christ, God's only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And we will come to judge the living and the dead. I give my heart to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, O God. You nourish our heart in its yearning. You dignify our soul in its struggling. You harmonize our grief and gladness. You make melody from the fragments of chaos. You align our spirit with creation. You reveal the grace of God. You calm us and delight us and set us free to love and forgive. Lord, Lord, Lord hear us and lead us through your grace. Let us pray for our nation in a time of crisis. Keep our hearts open with compassion and caring for those who have been affected by the pandemic. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. Let us pray for those who do migrant work 
and for those who are unemployed. Guide the people of this land to use its wealth so that all may find fulfilling employment and receive just payment for their labor. Be with those who are disheartened. Bless them with courage and let it be as a spark to their flagging spirits. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. Let us sense your loving presence in our moments of bewilderment, our days of trial, and our nights of worry. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. Be with those who are isolated due to illness and comfort them with your healing touch. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. Let us love in such a way that when we die, our love will survive and continue to grow. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. We pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God, and your great kindness answer us with your constant help. Lord, hear us and lead us through your grace. For all those who are sick or infirm, and for those suffering because of COVID-19, and for all who have asked for our prayers, Ina, Cindy, Samantha, Laura, Rosie, Liz, Janice, Carol, Jennifer, Nina, Frank, Barbara, Helen, Matthew, Jenny, Catherine, Reggie, Pam, Roy, Karen, Ollie, Jason, Alan, Donna, Tom, Daryl, Frankie, Margaret, Sue, Ali, Liam, Corey, Michael, Amber, Eric, Leslie, Elliot, Neville, Sally, Bob, Sue, Mike, Denise, Grant, Rosemary, Connie, Jackie, Jamie, Gay, John, Helen, Charlotte, We pray also for all the saints who have gone before us, especially Cheryl Beckett, Tim Beckett, Herman Hauser, Eileen House, Jerry Dolish, Margaret Schreiber, Esther Merritt, Betty Brock, Michael Brock, Larry Betty. that they may receive your healing touch. Good and gracious God, send forth your Holy Spirit upon your people throughout the world. Tear down the walls that divide us, and make us one through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you.
the names of people, and we'll put uh, everyone's name in the bulletin for next Sunday. And so, family members, friends, loved ones, yourself, currently or in the past in the military, let us put your names in the bulletin. Thirdly, you have all by now probably received in the mail a pledge card that we ask you to prayerfully discern and think about how you can share your talent, time, and treasure with us. We ask that you fill it out, put it in the self-addressed stamp envelope, and mail it back to us. Or if you have it with you, drop it off at the church office sometime when you're here, or to bring it in on the Sunday before Thanksgiving when we'll collect all of them as well. So we thank you for being present to that. And we're already starting to receive the cards in. So thank you if you have already turned your pledge form in. Other announcements for the good of the community. I just wanted to ask um, everybody here knows that I work with uh, at risk students at school who are low income, who really, you know, are working hard this year to do what they need to do. But I have a lot of parents who are struggling. And it's the time of year where it's really cold, and I've noticed that my kids don't have hats or gloves. If there's anybody that would be willing to donate so that we can get those what we need um, for the kids, that would be wonderful. Just let me know, please. Thanks. And the, for the pledge drive on the card, it says if you're going to receive envelopes. I went to go put the order in, and I'm debating on the order because the boxes went up to five dollars a piece. That's to mail because they put the cost of the printing, the mailing, and everything. So if you don't give weekly, if or if you use automatic payment to the church, please don't ask for envelopes. I know some of you said one person said because oh, because they give extra for Christmas and Easter. And that's why we have these my off uh, my Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, offering envelopes in the pews, and that's where you can put extra offerings and you can write what you want it for. It would help save us a lot of money. Um, yeah, because like our order that we normally get was like triple the cost of what we paid last year. So I'm like kind of rethinking the envelope system. Um, so the less that, if you give weekly, you know, yes, I can see you getting envelopes, but if you just give once a month or have your automatic sent from the bank. I appreciate it if you wouldn't um, check to get envelopes. Thank you. Other announcements? Anybody celebrating a birthday or anniversary today or this week? And walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Jesus fed thousands of people with seemingly little effort, yet we have great difficulty feeding children in our own country, let alone the entire world. And even while we are praying this prayer, someone has died from starvation. So when we share resources with caregiving ministries, your hand is upon our shoulders, just like it was upon Jesus' shoulders the day he fed his followers. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to change lives by becoming generous caregivers of the resources that you first gave to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Which we are blessed, we offer our gifts to our God to carry on the works of Jesus Christ our Lord for all he has given us. And may God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Creating and redeeming God in Adam, Abraham, Moses, Deborah, Esther, and Mary, you have chosen not simply to direct the course of events, but to be in relationship with us and to entrust your children with the embodiment and exercise of your will. In the dying and rising Christ, you give us not just a savior, but an example. And in every generation, you call people to imitate the pattern of his life and death, and so witness to your glory. You call us to be not heroes who go it alone, but saints whose every breath depends on others and on you. We rejoice that those saints take their place in the company of heaven, with whom we join in singing the unending hymn of your joy and praise. that they may be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. after supper, Jesus took the cup. Again he gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Resurrecting God, bless those who mourn, that they may be comforted. Bless the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven. Bless the pure in heart, 
that they may see you. Visit those who face death amid persecution and violence, that they may know the gladness and rejoicing of your kingdom. Be close to any who end their days in agony and isolation, that they may enter the joy of their reward. Where your children feel all is lost, meet them in their fear, touch them in their loneliness, and raise them by your mercy, so that on the last day, when you bring a new heaven and a new earth, they may discover you as an infinite circle whose center is everywhere and whose some circumference is nowhere, and be changed from glory into glory with and by you, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. For it is through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we have signed into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom, power, and glory, forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover. that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Remember that everyone is welcome to receive communion and if you need a gluten-free wafer, please let me know. singing our song for communion, I am the bread of life.
Let us say together our post-communion prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for nourishing us with the food of our Savior. Now send us out in the power of your Spirit to be beacons of hope and love in your world. For it is through Christ and with all your saints that we offer ourselves and our lives to your service, O God. We only pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And may Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and earth, give you strength, courage, and boldness to do God's will in this world. And may the blessing of God, our Creator, God, our Redeemer, and God, our Sanctifier, be with you this day and forever. Amen.
Thanks, Nora. Appreciate it.